Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today's a little bit of an unplanned topic, and that's because I had one of the biggest episodes of watch nostalgia I've ever had. I ran across uh, not only one piece, but two pieces I never thought I'd see again, and I couldn't be happier. And actually, I did buy these watches uh, for Delray Watch Supply, so I guess uh, this could be considered a little bit of an ad. However, um, I'm sure you guys are really interested to see what I picked up, because both pieces, uh, even though on opposite sides of the price spectrum, are super interesting. And of course, go check out Delray Watch Supply, that's DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below, if you want to take a look uh, at the pictures of these pieces after the video, of course. Uh, and today I'm wearing the Panerai Pam 111, um, but I'm wearing that now because the rest of the day I was wearing this other really cool piece that I'm gonna show you right here. But before we do that, if you guys remember in my Keeper video, three watches I'd never sell, uh, was my Torno Triple Date Moon Phase made by Walden International. Well, I actually found one in the wild, and this is the first time I've ever seen another one in real life. Even when I worked at Torno, the only one I ever saw was the one I bought. Um, and I saw it, and I, I bought it immediately, and it's up for sale on my site. Now, all, all you guys were asking me to purchase mine, and I will never sell mine. It is a keeper, um, but for all you guys that were asking, the Tourneau Triple Date Moon Phase Chronograph, uh, with that beautifully decorated movement made by Walden, is on the website. So that is the first one um, that I saw, and I was just, you know, a little shocked because I hadn't seen another one uh, in almost 10 years. But the piece that really kind of tugged at my heartstrings is this. And this is the Cartier Calibre Center Seconds, or rather Central Chronograph, um, part of the very rare Hot Horology line. Now, I'm going to do a review on this uh, piece, so excuse the camera work, uh, no close-up shots, and just a few Google images, because I didn't have time uh, to set it up. This just came in. Now, before I tell you what makes this piece so special to me, this is part of Cartier's extremely rare Hot Horology line, designed by Carol Forestier, who was the ex-head of Renault and Papi. Now, if you've never heard of Renault and Papi, that's because they don't make watches. They only make complications for watches. So if Audemars Piguet or Richard Mille needs a, um, a complication module, Renault and Papi are one of the companies that do that. Carol Forestier joined Cartier and spearheaded this super hot horology uh, line of Cartier's watchmaking. Now, this is in the Calibre case, but this is no ordinary Calibre. This is an in-house movement with a Geneva seal uh, that's built on top of a Jaeger uh, chronograph. Vertical clutch, 50-hour power reserve, and of course, it is manual wind, not automatic. And what this is, is it's a normal timekeeper, but here in the middle, or as you can see in the picture, the chronograph is completely done with jump hours, uh, which is super complicated. I mean, jump hour watches are complicated, but this is an entire chronograph mechanism built on the jump hour. And of course, it's made in 18 karat rose gold. And I'm going to put it on here just so you guys can see. I mean, not since that gold Panerai I got, I got in have I been so in love with the piece I mean, this looks excellent on me. This is the perfect, perfect watch for me. Um, and not only because of the complication, the look, and the history, but this watch is really special to me. Um, and let me tell you a little story. A lot of you viewers may know that I started my career uh, at Cartier, Cartier Fifth Avenue at, at what they call the Mansion, their flagship store. And I was their watch specialist. I was one of three watch specialists and I was in the watch salon you know the room where they keep all the watches and all the way at the back there was the hot horology room which included the tourbillons the central 
uh, chronograph. It included the the what was it the time the the normal jump hour, the multi time zone, all those pieces. And this was the first time I ever worked in watches, and I wasn't allowed to sell those watches because I was the junior most employee. I was barely allowed to walk into that room, and I just remember the hours and hours and hours I spent after work in that room just taking a look um, at the pieces, one of which was uh, this model. And those were very rare. I mean, they probably made less than 10 or 20 of these in the entire world. I mean, I don't know. They're not actually limited, but they made very, very few of these. Uh, this is number 140. So actually, significantly more than that. But this is number 140. This was, these were very rare. And there was this entire room with chandeliers and champagne dedicated to this collection. Um, and I actually sold a couple of these, but I wasn't allowed to close the sale. I had to hand it off to the high horology specialist. But this was the watch, particularly the Kalib, that was launched right when I started my career. And uh, this is the watch along with the Turbion variant, that I spent uh, so many hours kind of fawning over. And when I saw it today for sale, um, you know, available from a wholesale watch dealer, I couldn't say no. I had to pick it up. Um, might not be the most widely spread watch out there, might not be the most well-known but it is uh, hot horology, and there is no better watchmaking out there, or at least no better caliber of watchmaking out there. And it really uh, meant a lot to me to see this watch again. I haven't seen it, as I said, since since I started my career in, in Cartier, my first ever, my first ever job. Le Cartier Calibre Central Second Chrono. I keep saying Central Second. It's not Central Second. It's a Central Chronograph, in eighteen karat rose gold. Um, one of the forgotten titans of hot horology, made by one of watchmaking's uh, most prestigious designers, uh, Carol Forestier, and of course with the Cartier name on it, uh, with the Geneva seal. And actually, it was this collection that, rumor has it, made Patek Philippe stop using the Geneva seal because they didn't want Cartier to join the club. And uh, not only did Cartier join the club, but Cartier joined the club uh, in fantastic style and with some fantastic engineering. I just wanted to share the story, guys. It was really special to me. Uh, it's still really special to me. Unfortunately, I can't afford to keep it. It's uh, significantly out of my personal price range. But when I saw it, I had to buy it. And uh, I kind of had to, to share this with you just because it means a lot to me. This really kind of brought me back uh, to my memories of, you know, standing in the Cartier watch salon my first two days, scared shitless, uh, never having dealt with clients, never worked retail, never worked in watches, and just doing my best to kind of hide the fact that I really didn't know anything uh, about watches, at least not yet. But this was back when uh, I had way more hair. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this was, this kind of really hit me big time today. You know, it was a pretty special thing for me to see. But guys, do you have watch nostalgia? Has, has anything like this ever happened to you? Is there any piece that just triggers any of these memories for you? I'd love to know. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. And of course, if you guys want to check out the Torno or the Cartier Calibre Central Chronograph, they're on DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Federico Talks Watchers, and please stay tuned for the review of the Cartier Central Second, Central Second, damn it, Central Chronograph, rather. I'll never be able to get that name right. Uh, and of course, please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.